We started to veer into this a little bit ago. Jim Hollis, who's written a number of books that we can heartily recommend, says, oh, if you want to know what your shadow is, um, just ask your best friend. Actually, what he says is ask your spouse. Oh. <laughs> oh, worse and worse. It's interesting, like, what would your spouse say about you? You might have some inkling, or it might really surprise you. If your spouse or a, f- a good friend comes up with something that you don't like, just notice your reaction. That person said, I was uh, needy. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not. I can't be that. I'm not that. You'll feel like you've been stung. So that's the bad news. But the good news is, if those are things that trusted others have observed about you, how do you then take that into consideration? The development of the shadow is necessary, and it's in the interest of adaptation. It's a functional complex, which is an organ in the psyche. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So how do we start to identify what our complexes are? And uh, we started to veer into this a little bit mm-hmm. ago. Uh, uh, Jim Hollis, who's written a number of books that we can heartily recommend for interested audiences on Jungian concepts, says, oh, if you want to know what your shadow is, um, just ask your best friend. Actually, um, what he says is ask your spouse. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh worse and worse. Ask. And if your spouse or a, f- a good friend, um, you know, comes up with something uh, that you don't like, just notice your reaction. Just, n- just notice, like that person said, I was uh, needy. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not. You might not say anything, but just notice what comes up inside of that instant feeling of what you touched on at the outset, Joseph, shame. Of I can't be that. I'm not that. I'm not needy, am I? And and just sit with that as as an awareness of your emotions, your feelings will tell you because you'll feel like you've been stung. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the bad news. But the good news is, um, if those are things that trusted others have observed about you, how do you then take that into consideration? So I, I remember, you know, I remember being in the room when Hollis was teaching us and, and he was teaching us about the shadow and he was like, if you want to know what your shadow is, ask your spouse. And of course, everyone laughs, right? <laughs> and it is kind of a funny idea. But when, you know, it's interesting, like, what would, what would your spouse say about you? You might have some inkling or it might really surprise you. Joseph, I remember a time when we were in training and I can't remember what the I can't remember what what um, kind of what, what what brought about this discussion, but you and I were talking about something, and you sort of reflected to me like Lisa, here's how you come across, and it wasn't really how I saw myself at all, um, but you, you basically, <laughs> in so many words, you, you, you know, it was it. I think you were very gentle about it, but I think what you were trying to tell me was I kind of come across like. Um, uh, a little bit like a ton of bricks. <laughs> you didn't say it like that, <laughs> but but that I that I kind of come across as a little bit intimidating, maybe even. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "That's you know, that's not that's not how I am," <laughs> you know. But it was really startling to you, you know. We were I think we, we were talking about like how, how what I might be provoking in, for example, the analysts that were training us or something. And uh, it was it was really it gave me a lot to think about. It was a big surprise. And this is also so much of what we do early in analysis that once we have a trusting relationship, that we're pointing out things that 
that are not conscious, that are, that are also causing the individual suffering. Right. And, and if they did know it, then they'd have their hands on the controls a little bit. Right. And perhaps use it when it really it needs to be used, but often kind of uh, you know, put it in the passenger seat when it's causing problems. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, one of the ways you can get to know your shadow is to really bring, you know, really have an analytic process because hopefully your therapist or your analyst will let you know. Now, a lot of therapists find it very difficult to uh, reflect uh, this kind of material to someone because it's upsetting and we, we want to be nice and we want to be supportive. And we're told that we should be affirming and and all of that, but it's not it's not helpful to avoid reflecting shadow qualities to someone. I mean, uh, the psychoanalyst Karen Moroda points this out that in adult society, if you do something that routinely offends or puts off other people, they'll just stop answering your texts. They're not going to tell you. I mean, when you're kids, kids will sometimes give each other really bruising feedback, but at least it's helpful. I remember when one of my kids, you know, was pretty bossy and uh, some, some of the other kids were kind of letting her know that. And I, and I, so it was hard to watch, but I was like, well, that's, you know, she's having some, she's getting some feedback, you know? Uh, but we don't get feedback as adults. We just have people kind of ghost us or we don't get the job. And that can be one of the really important roles of an analyst is to say, well, you know, or, or therapist, um, I think I can see maybe how that happened. Because, you know, sometimes I experience you this way and it's possible that other people experience you that way too. And they might find that off-putting. So it's it's hard to hear, but the reality is it's happening anyway. Right. <laughs> it's right. it's not as if you can just avoid it, and you know that somebody's kind of rubbing your nose in it. Uh, it's acting on you, and um, you know to use the example you just gave us, people are constantly ghosting this person. And the person is just bewildered and hurt and insulted and angry and whoa. Let's let's just take a look at this. Something is is happening, uh, and usually there is data, just behavioral dynamics. It's not that a therapist or, or an analyst is going to say, "Well, you know, you always just come across like." It's like last week I remember you mentioned this and the week before and then you know a number of times this has come up so to to lift up the behavioral or outer world dynamics and also to say well you know this is welcome to the land of shadow right. and and it is bruising to the ego uh, as it always is, we have these images of ourselves, our personas, the bright, shiny, wonderful face we want to show to the world. But not only is that not true, uh, it's not all we are. And some of those traits that are uh, not in good service to us in the waking world, if we can import them into consciousness, they can be really of service that a person whose shadow is a very needy can learn how to seek help, learn mm -hmm. how to seek support. Right. I'd like to ask for support. And who do I want to ask for support for what? Uh, somebody who is uh, ambitious. Go team. Um, how, how do you use that for your own life and your development. So it's our unconsciousness that's doing us in. Uh, not, right. not, not likely, not likely the trait itself. 
Well, and I just want to say that that's really well put, Deb. And I just, I want to say another word about uh, being a therapist, because I, there are a lot of therapists that listen to us. When someone's, let's say, been per- perpetually ghosted, and maybe has gotten like this much feedback and relays that to you in session. And you can see what, like you can draw the lines and you <laughs> think you know what's going on. We feel like, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of many times that this has happened and it's like all I, my impulse is I just want to comfort the person and I just, the person maybe feels outraged and like, why does this always happen? And people are wrong and people are bad. And, you know, there's a part of me that go, wants to go, yeah, you know, it's, it, people suck that they keep doing that to you. That's not ultimately helpful. If you think you know what's happening, you need to, you know, you need to, 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 to st- st- stick your courage to the sticking point and say something, you know, here's what might be happening. Yeah. Because that's, and, you know, you need to do it gently like you did with me, Joseph. <laughs> but uh, you got to give some people helpful feedback. And we have to just be comfortable with the fact that there are these feelings in the room with, without rushing to comfort and gloss them right. over right. and change it to a good feeling of like, well, this is really very big. And, um, there's a big feeling in the room, and we together, uh, we we can tolerate that. We can look at it. We can be curious about it. Um, we don't have to run away from it. That's part of what the problem is: is the running away from it. Mm-hmm. 